What's up guys, Andy Stacks here. In this video, we're gonna check out some more hands that I played recently on GG Poker on their Russian cash tables. If you missed the hands from the last video, you can use the links in the description below. Also for more online poker stuff, tournaments, events, etc., you can find more info at stackspoker.co. So in this hand, I'm in the big blind Fold. with ace 10 offsuit. Fold. Fold. Fold around to the button, who raises to 2.3 big blinds. Versus a button open, I think this is a pretty good tan to 3-bet. Raise. We make it 8 big blinds. Raise. But after some thought, he raises again to 20 big blinds. Normally I would just fold now without overthinking it, but then I notice the little number 39 above his name. So what that number means is the player's VPIP. VPIP of course means how often a player is putting money into the pot when not already in the blinds. So this player is playing 39% of hands. That's super high for 6 max. And I scrolled over his name to see his other stats. Saw that his preflop raise and 3 bet percentages are also ridiculously high. It's a small sample size, it's only 51 hands, but those numbers are still really high. I don't want to go too much in depth in this video about these stats or what they could mean, but usually 20 to 30% for VPIP is standard. Anything about 30 is considered pretty loose. I'll make a separate video in the future that explains these stats more clearly for those that are interested. So seeing this, along with having the ace blocker, I thought shoving here was the best play and would get him to fold if he was 4-bet bluffing. All in. Fold. And he chooses not to gamble. So next hand, we have ace-10 offsuit again in the big blind. Fold. Raise. And again, everybody falls to the button, who raises. Call. This time, I chose to just call. Check. Flop comes 10, king, 7, rainbow. We hit middle pair of 10s and check. Bet. You see bet small. Call. There's no reason to check. do anything else here except call. Turn is the ace of hearts, giving me two pair, and also putting a backdoor hard draw on the board. I check again, and Bet. he bets again, this time for half pot. I think I have the best hand here very often. He could be bluffing the ace on the turn, and I think check raising here would be a mistake. If he is bluffing, we want him to keep bluffing, and as the preflop raiser, he has all the strongest hands in his range. Tens, ace king, kings, aces, and if we raise, we're only really representing queen jack and maybe pocket sevens. So if he recognizes that, he could theoretically raise again and put a ton of pressure on my hand. Call. Check. So I do just call. The river is the three of diamonds, hearts missed, I check, bet. and now he bets 2x the pot. Super polarizing bet. Doesn't feel great, but I think this is a spot where we just have to call down. We played it passively the whole call. way. I make the call and we see that he turned pocket nines into a bluff. And we win a nice size pot by letting him bet. Next hand we get ace 4 offsuit in the cutoff. Fold. Folds to us. Raise. And we raise it up. Call. Big blind calls. Flop Check. comes 10, 7, ace with two hearts. Bet. Raise. We see bet and he decides to raise a small. So we have top pair with a weak kicker, but this flop is super wet with flush and straight draws. Unless he flopped two pair, he's just gonna have one of the draws most of the time. Call. I make the call. The turn is the nine of clubs. Check. Now he checks. I think betting for value is the best play here. With the 9, he could have hands like 8-9 or jack-9 that he check-raise the flop with, or just have hearts. Bet. Call. Check. So I bet half pot, and he check calls. The river is the 8 of spades, putting a 4 card straight on the board now. It's a pretty big scare card, but luckily he checks. I don't think I can get called by any worse check. hands, so I check back, and he shows king-9 of hearts. Easier said than done, and obviously I know I only have one pair, but I think with his hand, he could have considered leading big on the river as a bluff. His 9 is almost never going to be good enough to win a showdown, and I think because I had bet the turn, the only jack-x combo I could have that really makes sense is ace-jack, because if I had pocket jacks, jack-10, or jack-9, most likely I wouldn't bet the turn when check-2. So if he did realize that and lead out really big on the river, I probably would have to fold. Next hand, I'm in the big blind with king-queen offsuit. Fold. Everybody folds, it's just me in the small blind. Raise. He raises. 
Raise. And a three bet. Call. And he calls. Flop comes nine, queen, queen, two diamonds. Great flop, giving me trip queens. Check. Bet. He checks. Here, because the board is so wet with draws, I didn't want to slow play, so I bet half pot. Raise. Lucky for us, he decides to check raise. I think calling here is probably the best play. Raising again will seem too strong, and it's unlikely he has the last queen. Call. So I just call. Now the turn is an interesting card. It's the ace of hearts, now putting a second flush draw on the board. Bet. He bets again, and this time with almost the same size that he used on the flop. This kind of confused me. I wasn't really sure what it meant. Maybe he sometimes still has a draw that is trying to set his own price. I didn't want to just call again, letting him see a cheap river in case he was drawing. All in. I decided to just go all in, hoping he'd feel priced in and call due to the pot size. Fold. Fortunately, he quickly folded. <laughs> Next hand, I'm in the big blind, Fold. this time with Fold. King 10 offsuit. Fold. Raise. It folds around to the button and he raises. You guys probably noticed that a lot of these hands in 6 max are late position versus one of the blinds. This is pretty common because of the aggressive nature of 6 max play. There's almost no limping, lots of 3 bets, and a lot of your key pots are going to be figuring out how to defend and play well from the blinds. King 10 here is a strong hand to defend, so oh. I call. Flop is 5 king deuce with 2 spades. I hit top pair with a backdoor flush draw with the king of spades. Check. I check, and he checks back. Check. Check. Turn is the seven of diamonds. I deceptively decide to check again. Bet. And now he bets. There's no reason to raise, call. so I just call. Check. The river pairs the five. I check. Bet. And now he goes for a three quarters pot. Call. Obviously, I call, and he shows King Jack out kicking us with top pair. This hand isn't anything too special, it's kind of just a mini cooler. But I do want to point out that when a player raises pre-flop, then checks back on a flop that is often good for his C betting range, some alarm bells should go off. So in this case, the board came king high and he chose not to C bet the flop. We should ask ourselves why. Usually in my experience, this indicates he has either showdown value or is trapping. Hands that missed with no showdown value will tend to bet at least once. Of course, this is very player dependent and not always the case, but I think it is worth noting. Still, it wouldn't have changed my action in this hand. Fold. Raise. Next hand, we get king queen offsuit on the button. It folds to the cutoff and he raises. Raise. I'm gonna re raise almost every time here. The blinds fold and the flop fold. comes king ace nine rainbow, Check. giving me second pair. Bet. With the range advantage, I'm going to see bet my entire range on this board. Call. And he calls. The turn is the king of spades, giving me basically the relative nuts. Check. I think betting here would be the more exploitative play to try to get another bet from a pair of aces. And checking back would be the more balanced play. Against a player that we know is a calling station, I would lean towards just betting again for value. I think against an unknown opponent, it really doesn't matter that much. But against players you play with often, it is important to be balanced and sometimes check back some super strong hands. That way your opponent can't be certain you never have a strong hand when you check back the turn. Check. I do decide to check back here. Check. The river is the four of spades. He checks. The back door flush does fill, but unless he had nine X of spades, it's pretty rare for him to have made a flush. Bet. I decide to bet around 70% pot here, hoping he calls down with either an ace or a nine. Fold. But he folds. I think his hand was probably just too weak and wasn't going to call the turn either if I bet. Alright, that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed these hands. More to come in the next video. For more online poker stuff, tournaments, events, updates, etc., you can find more info at stackspoker.co. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Feel free to leave your comments, share your thoughts on the hands, or ask any poker questions and I'll try to address them in the future videos. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.